afternoon everyone if you're watching this welcome back to the channel just a little video well I say it's gonna be a little video it's probably gonna I don't know how to do this because um a couple weeks ago or about mm, about a month ago I went to the Great British Land Rover show in Bath and West and uh, picked myself up a centre diff lock an Ashcroft centre diff lock linkage for this because uh, it's got the transfer box with the centre diff lock just didn't have the linkage so I picked that up uh, you'll see that next uh, again I, I filmed it a couple weeks ago <coughs> or about a month ago just never got around to uploading it I just do this for a bit of fun really um, so you're going to see me fitting it it's probably not the, the best video not the best tutorial it was me just attempting it again I'm new at this editing and making videos and stuff I just do it because I get a bit bored and it's something to do uh, after that it will be going off road I think it was Big Nard Quarry somewhere near Radstock uh, it's a it's organised by 4x4 days so if you go on Facebook you'll be able to find them just type in 4x4 days there's the sticker so that'd be the one the people that organise it yeah I just don't know how the video is going to turn out whether I do it in two bits or just chuck it all into one bit it'd be quite a long video um, I'm going to do my best to edit it out so uh once I fitted the set of diff lock linkage, I've done a bit of research online and on these earlier ones, obviously they were never made to, the ABS system was never made to work with the set of diff lock engaged, but on the 2003 and 2004, I think it's the uh, slabs ECU for traction control, hill descent and uh, the ABS system, you know, something along those sort of lines. If I grab my one that I like took, took out, I'll show you the serial number because this is what you've got to look out for. Again, there was another chap on YouTube that I uh, I watched and he kind of explained that I can't... I... So that's what I had to pull out from underneath the passenger, passenger side, underneath the glove box, was this thing. And I think this is what controls the ABS system, hill descent, all that sort of good stuff. So, there's a serial number on this one, SRD000070. You want to find one, SRD000150. That's from the, I f I'm not too sure what years they came, I think it must have been like late 2002 because uh, I think that there is the week that it was made, the year that it was made. And if I'm correct, there was a, a recall and uh, people with Land Rover, Land Rovers would have to take them back to Land Rover and they would swap these out because the previous ones, I don't know if it was just I don't know, I suppose it was all new to them, wasn't it? The ABS system and the traction control, hill descent, it was all first generation <clears throat> so this would have been replaced by Land Rover at some point as the recall but what you're looking for here is that there's SRD 000150 that's what you want I think there was another one I can't remember the serial number I think it was 100070 if I am correct I could be wrong on that which came from the 2004. Now I think when you engage the center diff lock on the 2004 version, you could do it with the engine on, off, and it would recognize what's going on. And I think it just made the ABS system, traction control system, less aggressive so it wouldn't break parts because it's aware that it is engaged and it needs to work with the center diff lock. Whereas from the research that I'd done, if I was to engage my centre diff lock with the engine off then start the vehicle the ABS traction control system would be completely switched off and it was all centre diff lock but apparently the best thing 
but it, you know, to make it as capable as possible was having centre diff lock working with the ABS traction control system. So that's why I took this one out and put the other one in so that I think how it goes if you have the one that I have, which is 150 at the end of the serial number, when you engage the centre diff lock with the engine on, everything's all good. But if you were to stall it, turn it back on, ABS system, traction control system is disengaged. So you need to have it, you need to engage it when the engine is on. And again, if you stall it, take centre diff lock out, restart the engine, re engage it, and it will recognize that it's on there. Sorry if that's a bit long winded, it's just I've done a lot of research into this sort of stuff because I, I don't want to be breaking stuff, I want to make it the best it can be. Well, enough of that. <clears throat> Again, it's just like a little, little intro because I don't know how I'm going to do this. The first video will be me putting the center diff lock in. After that, it will be some videos that I took. The first couple of videos weren't the greatest because I I have my camera on the holder down here and it was focusing more on the dashboard rather than what was going on outside. Uh, then I mounted this up at the top here and it was a much better view so you know you can just skip past that part of the video if you really want to. Uh, I think I explained it in a couple of the videos. So my mate's truck, he's got two inch lift on the suspension, uh, shocks and springs, two inch blocks underneath the suspension, 33 inch tires. Uh, he's got working traction control, but no center diff lock. I think you should invest in that because this thing is on 30 inch tires. So, you know, the originals were 29s, these are 30s. It's got a two inch lift uh, springs and shocks. It's completely standard, it's not mapped at all. But with the centre diff lock engaged, it changed everything. I mean, when the ABS system is kicking in, you know, when you're um, you're doing your thing, you keep your, your foot steady on the accelerator and it will work itself out and pull you up the hill. With the centre diff lock engaged, this thing just kept on pulling. It just, it was amazing how the centre diff lock and the ABS traction control system was working together and just pulled me up some things that I really thought I was going to struggle with but it, it didn't. The only thing that let me down and got me hung up, which I didn't get that footage, was the tow bar was just dragging into everything and I, like the rear axle was hanging down. So it was quite, some of the stuff was quite aggressive there but as you can see the tow bar is missing paint and that was the thing that kept hanging me up. I really enjoyed it. That was its first outing since it's had the half chassis done, the two inch lift. Um, I've recently just had the rear axle resealed, new hub seals on the rear. Obviously had that out, new oil. I've extend, got the uh, brake lines extended, but I didn't do the ABS wires and they seem to be long enough as it was. I was always under the impression that if you extend, you know, you lift it up two inches, you want to do the brake lines as well as the ABS sensors, but the ABS sensor kind of looks almost as long when I put them together, almost as long. Not as long as the two inch uh, brake lines, but that almost as long. But I'm pretty sure I've got the two inch lift on the springs and then these shocks, which came with the kit, supposed to be a standard length, so I don't know whether that means it it will not articulate any more than what I did from factory, but it doesn't, I'm not looking, again, I've said it in previous videos, <clears throat> this isn't an off-road warrior. It's my daily when I do use it. I don't really take it off-road all that much. Now and again, just for a bit of fun, it's got a couple, it, it was absolutely plastered. But I got a couple new scratches down the side. You can't really see them too, well, you can kind of see them there, going all the way down but again, doesn't, that really doesn't bother me if the land rover, that's the best thing about it. As long as it's mechanically sound and it's not rotten away, I'm happy and it's, it's held up amazingly. So yes, yeah, so it's a first out since I had the half chassis, two inch lift, extended brake lines. I also put the spacers on the front cross member. I think we can see, yeah, there you go. 
think they, I can't remember what they were, 20 mil, 15, 20 mil, something along those sort of lines. It just stops the front prop from touching on it when you're articulating. Can't remember what else really has been done since that. To be honest, again, like it's, it's a standard truck, <clears throat> other than those few bits and bobs that I've done to it. But yeah, it, it performed amazingly. I was very impressed with how well it went around that track and some of the stuff I didn't want to do I saw again like I've not got an amazing amount of clearance on the on the diffs. You know and some of the rocks that I saw when I was approaching like going uphill at the top of one of the hills there was quite a big rock there. I might have been able to make it but if I was to break it or, you know, I ain't got no guards underneath, I don't want to be breaking stuff. I was taking it easy. It was just nice to go go out with my mate and do a bit of off-roading. Do what it was made to do. Other than that, I mean, I suppose I'll crack on with the centre diff lock video and then I'll chuck in the off-roading that we did do. Again, it's not the best. I'm going to try next time I go out. Uh, I'm going to try and buy some mounts so I can get some outside shots and some inside shots. That should be pretty good. Hello everyone. Just thought I'd make a little video of uh, what I've done since my last video, which I put out about, what was that, four weeks ago. Since then, I've been to the Great British Land Rover Show in Bath and West Showground. Uh, I got a little video of me and my mate going off-roading his truck and his uh, family as well. So I'll put that at the end of the video. But with this thing, since you last seen it, I've done a few things. I'll quickly show you the thing that I got at Bath and West. Now I was very happy to find one. I said to my mate before we went, I said if I find one of these, it was the one thing that I've been looking out for for a while. So if I see one, oh, it's a nice little hair. Uh, it's been raining quite a bit, so I don't know if you can see that wet patch there. I have sealed the sunroof, and yeah, it still leaks. That'd be <laughs> another thing on the list. Nice little puddle. Uh, and over life. So yeah, as I was saying, I said to him if I found one of these, I'd be very annoyed because I didn't bring any money with me. But the chap accepted a bank transfer, so I was pretty chuffed with that. So it's a uh, an Ashcroft selector, and my truck has the diff lock capability, just no linkage. As some of the earlier ones did have it, I think. <coughs> Mine's a 1998, so it's a very early one. I think I looked on the V5 the other day, it said November 1998. 19th November 1998. And it does have it. So, when I saw this thing... I was extremely chuffed, because brand new, they're about 450 I think it is on eBay. Um, I've seen a couple come up second hand for about, say, 280. I spoke to the chap and he said that he wanted 180 quid for it. It's never been fitted. And I was on an arm for a little bit. I walked away, I said, I'll have a think on it. And within a minute or two, I said to my mate, I need to go back and get it now. Because if I, if I don't get it now, I'm never going to find one that cheap again. And by the time I got there, two minutes later, you put the price up from... 180 to 225 pound because he said he had a lot of interest in it <coughs> but i said to him you know if you're if you'd willing be willing to accept that 108 I'll, I'll have it now and i've done that so that's going to be today's video i suppose is ripping out the center center console and getting this thing put in and i'll quickly show you around the rest of the truck and what I've done to it in the past four weeks. So for the show, the arches were 
extremely dull. I bedlined, used bed liner on these ones and then done a satin black on top and they've come out right. I was in a bit of a rush and to be honest, they're just arches. I, I don't really, they're a bit rough but it really doesn't bother me. This thing's got scratches and dents and bits of paint missing and it's a Land Rover at the end of the day. It's, it's, no, it's no show car, I've said it in one of my other videos. You know, it's not, it's never gonna be a show car, it's a car that gets used. So yeah, I bedlined that arch, this arch, and then gone over it with satin black. And then I went, I just gave those a quick rub down. It's dirty as hell, so you can't really tell, but. And like on the other side, and all I done with the other side was gave them a very light coat of primer. And they came out a lot smoother. I don't know if you can tell. They came out a lot smoother. Just a little grip brush flag on both sides. Another little thing I've done. And then something that took me quite a while to do was the LED lights. Little recovery flashing and the beacons, put them into the back lights. Bit of a strange place to put them, I suppose, but I've seen other people cut out a little section just here and I don't like that because what a pain in the ass it would be to replace that. Whereas the rear lights are easily swapped out and the piece that I put them into were just the reflectors. So what I've done was obviously lined up, marked the holes, drilled a hole through, uh, then there's the bigger one that went there, so I'd done three smaller holes and then done that one with the bigger one. Cut the cable, passed it through, obviously there's a hole on the other side, and then linked it all through. It's not the tidiest job, but I just drilled a hole there. I was able to get in behind this thing here, so I could get to the wire and push it up through. And then the cable just goes along there and it's all tucked in. Same with the other side as well. <coughs> so you can see, it comes down there underneath this, got it all the way underneath this. So that little bit of wire there comes along, just there, just underneath, underneath the carpets. And I've got, because I bought this kit off of eBay. Just drilled a hole there, same on the other side. Goes through and the control boxes in here. Get all the crap out. And that's the control box. So as you can see holes there, like it all just plugs into this. I've got it tucked up underneath there. That's a 12 volt one, so I had to buy this little adapter so I could have that there. Good thing about this one, it shows you uh, your battery voltage as well on it, which is nice. And then this one here, which obviously switch it on and off, change the pattern of the strobes. It's quite straightforward, but I had to extend all of the cables. I did buy it off eBay, and it said two and a half meters of, um, of cable per LED light. And it ended up being a meter, so I had to go out get a load of wire, wrap it up, do all that sort of business. And then for the front ones, underneath there, just up above the uh, accelerator pedal, is the uh, wire and harness bung. And I've just made a hole into that, passed the wire through. It goes underneath there, underneath the bonnet. <coughs> I'll show you the front LEDs. Pretty straightforward to do. That was another thing I've done as well. Badges. In my previous video, you might be able to see it. Um, I just spray painted over the original one, the green with the gold writing. But my mate showed me these ones, and I quite like them, so I thought I'd put those on. Just goes a bit better with the, the colour scheme, and also bonnet plate. Because it was something I wanted to do. I like it that I can. I can climb up onto the, you know, the back bumper up onto the roof on the roof rack. And I thought, well, that's a big, a big spot. 
I don't think I'll ever really need to climb up on it. But uh, the nieces and nephews like jumping on the car. Not jumping, but they get up on it and they love it. That's it at the moment, really. I mean, uh, yeah, little stickers on the sides, bonnet plate, LED lights, which I'll, I'll switch them on for you now so you can have a little look. But yeah, I, I thought it looks a little out of place, those lights. But at the same time, I like it. Let's quickly switch them on so you can have a little look. Many people have done this sort of stuff, so it's nothing, it's nothing new, but it's new to me. So ignition on. So that's plugged into that. Flip that on down there. Let's have a look. I'm thinking more for winter time, really, you know. <coughs> The little things and now it starts to rain I don't have a gun rack but I've got an umbrella rack <laughs> so if you bear with me I'll get all the bits I need to uh, get that diff lock linkage put in again no it was a uh, it was a case of buy it now or save up for the future. But yeah, I've got it, which is good. And then the next thing is finding a replacement of that. I cannot find. Uh, they make they do them over in America. I think it's twenty five dollars for one of those for the uh, the diff lock warning sticker. I always thought it was a sticker, it's because it's a sticker, but it's like a gel, a gel one. Uh, you seem to be able to get them from America, but it's twenty five dollars for the warning label and another twenty seven dollars for shipping and I don't think I'm willing to pay that just for for that so I'm gonna see if um I can get someone to make me a sticker which would be a lot cheaper just f find a design the one that I need because it's a manual gearbox uh with the diff lock bits but yeah let's uh let's rip this all apart. Get that death lock linkage in. Alright guys, so I've gotten to this point. Unwound that, took that off. Gators, pop that off. Same with this one, just about the teak. That bolt out there to pull this up out of the way. Uh, inside of here. Two screw bolts there. Pop them out. Just slid uh two. So I popped that off. And then this was being held in by two screws. I'm pretty sure it's meant to be four, but two of the tabs at the bottom are broken. And then just pop all of those off. There's already videos on this. There's plenty of them, but I'll just show you as I go along what I've done. See, so yeah, I'm about to take that one off. It's a 13 mil. It just gets that up out of the way. Then I'm gonna pull Pop that off, push that pin through into the other side. So that comes out, cables and loose, this can go all the way up, which makes it easier to take this uh, whole center piece up and out of the way. And then we can uh, drill some rivets out. And there we are, that's that up out of the way. I forgot to mention, you put up that rubber mat and there's uh, another two just there. I started wrenching on it. Yeah, that one there, that one there. So now, i just got to get these heater ducts out of the way. And then I can get to the rivets for this here. Because I want to take, drop those, take those out. Uh, pull this up out of the way. I need to cut that wider, as it, I'll be able to shift it side to side for the diff lock. So yeah, I need to cut that a little wider there. And then, uh, yeah get back to you when I've made a bit more progress. Right, so an hour's gone by for me, but that would have been seconds. So, it is in. It was quite simple, uh, well, so I have to cut that open a bit more. It's a bit rugged, but you ain't gonna see it. So that's fine, it's gonna do the job. 
so I just drilled a couple holes, snipped along, because obviously now that goes side to side and up and down rather than just up and down for high and low. So this one as you can see, got the Ashcroft one, and we've got the standard one, and this one just goes forward and backwards for high and low, whereas this now sits over to the right hand side for the differential lock to be off. And then when I push this to the left, if I can push it over to the left, it's going to be quite difficult on one hand. So I'm going to pull it over to the left hand side to engage diff lock. Don't be sore, like I'm a bit, a bit shaky. Back to the right, turn it off. It's that simple. It's on. Try and get it back off again. Get the man down there. There it is. So it's in. It's a very simple bit of kit, but extremely expensive for what it is. It's a shame that someone doesn't like recreate these things and put them on the market for a bit cheaper. So I think a lot of people would be buying them up. Uh, so yeah, it was quite simple. I had to get you can do it all from inside the car as well, you don't have to go underneath. So as you can see, two dirty bolts I had to come out, put the bracket on, then I put the uh the moving part on, put a washer down, uh nylon lock nut as well, which was an M8. So that's it now, now I just gotta do the reverse of put that back in there, put this plate back on. Put the bolts in, then put a uh, pop rivets in, hold it all back into place. I should probably do that as well. I put um, when I first got this, it was really sloppy. This thing, as you can see now, it's not. It's quite difficult to push it over, but I think I just need to loosen the bolts and put them over slightly to the right. Because when I go into third gear, sometimes I find that I have to kind of like push it to the right a little bit, then go up. It doesn't bother me, it's more the missus that uh, struggles with it. Ah, I'll leave it. She'll get used to it. Um, so yeah, now it's just putting everything back together. As you can see, there's a couple bits and bobs and lots and bolts to go back in. I'll uh, get that back into place, show you the next stage. I'll do it in bits and bobs. Again, like there's plenty of videos showing how all of this comes out when people put the 300 TDI diff lock uh, piece in, I like this, it's just more straightforward. You don't need the like the pivot pin and all that which goes inside the gearbox for the 300. I did have one but I didn't end up using it in the end because it had a few missing parts and they seemed to be quite difficult to get those bits from. Uh, so, I'll see you in a second. So it's all in, the rivets back in, it was an absolute pain though. Uh, now that the cable underneath goes side on, it's hitting the side underneath and it was an absolute pain to get this plate back up to where I needed it to get the pop rivets in. So I had to use a screwdriver just to poke it through the hole and lift this plate up because even pulling on this like, I just couldn't get it quite so got it up there, got the pot rivets in, use some big ones because there's quite a bit of tension on that but it ain't going nowhere and then so it's currently in high. It's neutral, low, diff lock engaged. So now it's just putting all of this, all of this back where it needs to be. Hey, bud. Beautiful boy. Okay, so slowly get in there. Just put this back in. Put the ducts in for the heat for the back. And now, what I've got to do is put this back on, put the screws back in that, reconnect all of this mess. Tuck my wires for the uh, for the bits. 
Oh yeah, plug in the uh, 12 volt as well and the little light. There it is. I put everything back together, pulled all the wires back through into here. So now this should be hooked up again. Just grab a look real quick, just to make sure I haven't, I haven't really checked anything yet. I'm currently off. Let's go have another look. Yeah, they're on. So they're working, which is good. Go check the front. Yeah. And then ladies and gentlemen. Ugh. Moment of truth. Push it over to the left, and there it is. That's the diff lock engaged. I didn't get the chime. I've heard other ones where they've got the chime on them. So, let's take it off. It's a low box. Oh yeah, she's in low. goes over I'm going to have to move that cup holder because I keep bashing it every time I go over here it's no problem with that as you can see see and it didn't come on so I put it into low box yeah that's in low box push it over to the left There it is. Back over to the right. Make sure I'm in high. Yeah, and there we are. Well, I'd say that's successful. <laughs> the only problem is, I suppose, now I've got that and that which is in the way slightly. That's getting knocked when I put it over when it's in a low box. bugs me a little bit I might have to put that back here and I might also move and that doesn't it's not knocking into that bit and knocks into that which is slightly annoying but I could just shimmy that over there a little bit more so it's out of my way when I've got my hand around it which is not a problem it's like being able to keep an eye on the, uh, the volts sometimes oh, I think that's it um, other than that, same old Land Rover. Um, so thank you for watching my video. Like I said, I'll, I'll put the short video of me and my mate going off-roading at um, the Great British Land Rover, Great British Land Rover show. It was only a short one, it was like eight minutes long, but it's something. That Ace Light, I will be getting rid of that soon. Well, again, thank you for watching. Until next time.
in the sky room, was he? Okay, 
there is a limit. Doing well though, wasn't it? Doing its job. And the limit <coughs> sniff this. Oh yeah. Put it on it first and then just let it do what it's got to do. Oh my f Oh my f <laughs> the Cool. Are you interested in doing the skills test at the other end of the site? 